Walaikum Assalam Abira. I'm fine. How are you? That's great, mashallah. Right now, we will be discussing LO3. Evaluate the effectiveness of the systems, policies, and procedures used in a health and social care setting in achieving quality of the service offered. So these are the services which we will be discussing, specifically for those areas in which we discuss in which we will be discussing the policies, procedures used specifically in the health area. The first point says monitoring and review of the quality systems and the policies. Regular monitoring allows for timely identification of issues and ensures policies aligned with the best practices. For example, a hospital routinely reveals its infection control policies, monitoring the reveals and increase in hand hygiene compliance after implementing targeted training programs. So this is a kind of example that if we are regularly monitoring on uh, whatever the things are going on in the hospital or a healthcare system, we can control it as well. We can take pre-measures beforehand. Quality and compliance audit, adherence to the standards. Audits access, okay. Audits assess the compliance with regulatory standards, ensuring the services meet the legal requirements. For example, a home care agency conducts audits to verify staff training and client care plans findings guide improvements, ensuring compliance with industry regulation. Why we are doing that um, adherence to standard is compulsory when we check the quality and compliance audit, because in this way, we get to know that what things need um, further changes or more improvement. Quality control system. Effective control system prevent errors and ensure the consistency in the service delivery, for example, in a nursing home, a robust medication control system significantly reduces the medication errors, promoting this resident resident safety. Definitely, when we are going to take precautions beforehand, we are going to reduce the number of errors as well. Quality circles, staff collaboration. Quality circles encourage collaboration, harnessing the collective wisdom of the frontline staff. For example, in a community health center, a quality circle comprised of various staff members identifies challenges and proposes solutions enhancing the overall service quality. Definitely, when there is going to be a problem, we are going to discuss it as a team. If we are in the health center or in the corporate sector as well, we are going to find out a solution as well. Overall evaluation criteria. So these are the points or um, rest than the indicative content. The first one says consistency with the objectives. Objectives of the nursing home, objectives, it could be of the hospital, of the healthcare system. Assess how well systems align with the organization's quality objectives, ensuring a focus on improving services out. Adaptability and continuous improvement. Evaluate the organization's ability to adapt systems based on the feedback and monitoring, fostering a culture of continuous improvement. Definitely, when we are going to monitor something with the it's an assurity we are going to get a feedback on it and we are going to uh, get changes as well, recommendations, feedback, everything. Staff engagement, got staff involvement and commitment to implementing it there into the quality systems and procedures as well. We have to train the staff as well. Outcome measurement. Analyze measurable outcomes such as patient satisfaction or the adherence to the care plans to determine the impact of quality initiatives on the service quality. Um, I would highly uh, like to give an example of Ali Medical Hospital, which is in Islamabad, effort markers. They literally uh, buys, like they help you in buying the membership of the particular hospital. In this way, everything is in your hand. What kind of appointment you want to take, uh, what kind of medicines you need, everything is updated on the portal. Such a very good initiative. If I compare it to the general hospital like the PIMS one, uh, which is the biggest hospital of Pakistan and a public one, they don't offer these kind of facilities. Documentation and record keeping. Ensure comprehensive documentation and record keeping practices are in place, facilitating the accountability and transparency in service delivery. Again, when we are going to document something and keeping a record of the patient, everything should be opaque between both of you as a receptionist, doctors, and patient, not the, the other persons. Resource efficiency, evaluate the efficient use of resources in implementing and maintaining quality systems and showing the sustainability. Sustainability here means that we are going to make the data the record for a longer period of time. 
By using these criteria, health and social care settings can comprehensively evaluate the effectiveness of their systems, policies, and procedures in achieving and maintaining high-quality services. Continuous monitoring, feedback, and a commitment to improvement are key to success in the evaluation process. Coming towards 3.2, analyze. Again, this means you have to discuss about the negative and positive aspects, the importance, and the perspectives of various authors. The other factors or the set perspectives factors that influence the achievement of quality in health and social care services. So we will be discussing the uh, rest and the exact competence. What are the rest of the factors of competence which adhere to the health and social care services? Legislation. Legislation sets the legal framework of health for health and social care services defining the rights, responsibilities, and standards. It's like more like a document. For example, the Health and Social Care Act in the UK outlines regulations for the care providers, ensuring a legal foundation for the service quality. Compliance with legislation supports patient rights and safety. When we are legislized with the patient and the doctor, then everything goes under the document, whatever is decided in it. Standards and guidelines. Industry standards and guidelines establish benchmarks for service quality, providing a framework for the best practices. For example, the WHO sets mm -hmm. global standards for the patient care. Health facilities adhering to these standards ensure a consistent and high level of care globally. This is the best example, and the UNO uh, is also doing the same. Availability of resources. Adequate resources, including staff, equipment, and finances, are essential for delivering quality services. For example, a hospital with sufficient staffing levels, up-to-date medical equipment, and well-maintained facilities can provide timely and effective care, positively impacting services quality. Like um, when I met the doctor, they said that the anesthesia which they are going to use, it is the imported one. It is not the regular anesthesia which is used in the hospital in Pakistan. It is a gas one. So this is the benchmark of that particular hospital which they are offering to their patients. Training of staff. Well-trained staff with updated skills and knowledge contribute to significantly to the delivery of the quality care. Continuous training programs for nursing staff in a long-term care facility ensure they are informed about the latest care practices, promoting patient safety and satisfaction. Culture and structure. Organizational culture and structure shape the work environment, affecting communication, collaboration, and overall service quality. For example, a culture of openness and collaboration in the mental health clinic encourages staff to share the insights and address patient needs holistically, overall, enhancing the overall quality of care. If there is going to be a very nice uh, relationship between the doctors, nurses, patients, and the outdoor patients as well, then everything is going to be in harmony. Overall analysis, these are the points stressed, which are not in the indicative content. Interconnected nature. These factors are interconnected as legislation often sets the foundation for the standards and both influence resources, allocation of the staff training and organizational culture. Balancing Act. Achieving quality requires a delegate balance. Adequate resources are necessary for compliance with legislation and standards, and well trained staff can navigate complex legal and regulatory requirements. Patient centered focus. The ultimate goal is patient centered care. That is, legislation and standards are designed to ensure the rights and safety of the patients, and a well trained and supported staff with a positive organizational culture enhances the patient experience. Uh, again, this is a very good example that um, sometimes people forget to bring their national identity card or their references card in the hospitals. What can they do is they can simply ask general information and after that they can follow up the patients. As in, they can call them and get to know them what was the exact date and CNIC number. And this is the conclusion for this specific assessment criteria. Achieving quality in health and social care services requires a holistic approach that considers the intricate interplay of legislation, standards, resource availability, staff training, and organizational culture. Effective management and coordination of these factors contribute to the health system or the health environment that prioritizes the patient well-being and satisfaction. So ultimately, what is the conclusion if we work on each and every component stated in the 
best health or in the best recommendation of the health for the patients, then everything is going to be smooth for both the doctor and the patient's both. And in this way, you can increase the goodwill of your business as well, that is your hospital, and you're going to gain the loyal customers as well. Then we have suggest ways in which the health and social care services could improve its quality. This is a question similar to recommendations. Suggestions, recommendations is just like giving your opinion. What is better? How we can improve ourselves? Setting high customer service standards, it is a suggestion. Develop and communicate clear customer service standards in compassing aspects such as communication, responsiveness, and empathy. We can do this service as well. A hospital can establish benchmarks for waiting times, patient communication, and feedback mechanism, ensuring a high standard of service delivery. Person-centered care plan. Emphasize individualized care plans that consider the unique needs, preferences, and goals of each of us. So for example, the doctors, they uh, share the general diet plans or the nutritionist. But if we purchase the nutritionist plan or a diet plan from a specific dietitian, what they do is they do certain tests, they ask few questions, and they do analysis according to it, and they make our diet plans. For example, in a nursing home, personalized care plans can include tailored activities, dietary preferences, and social interactions, promoting a more holistic and patient-centered approach. Then we have empowering service users. Involve service users in decision-making process and show their opinions and preferences are valued. Whenever we are going to make a decision regarding a person or a patient, we should ask them that what do they think? After surgery or before surgery, what are the certain questions which they're having in their mind? For example, mental health facilities can implement shared decision-making practices where the service users actively participate in the treatment decisions fostering a sense of empowerment and autonomy. Empowering staff. Create a supportive work environment that encourages staff to contribute the ideas, make decisions, and take ownership of their roles. That is, they are generally making the staff to use the laser sphere leadership style, but in my opinion, it is not a good thing because when you're in the hospital, you are in the service sector, you have to be way to organize. Everything should be uh, in orderly, but there must be a room for humanity. Like in many cases, they don't start the operation or they don't check the body if there is a certain case which needs the provision of police or the FIR. Implementing a suggestion box for this type of ideas, recognizing and rewarding the innovation and providing the professional development opportunities to empower staff in contributing to service. Training staff. Invest in continuous training programs to ensure staff are updated on the latest best practices, technologies, and patient care techniques. Regular training sessions for the healthcare providers on the new medical technologies or the patient communication strategies can enhance the quality of care. Definitely, when we are we, why we're training the staff, the first question is because we are using the latest technology. We the world is changing so fast and so rapidly that. We have to train them, whether you have done recently a PhD, master's, double PhD, or whatsoever, you need training. Valuing the staff, recognize an appreciation or appreciate the contributions of staff through formal recognition programs, competitive compensation, and a positive work environment. For example, a healthcare organization can implement an employee recognition program to acknowledge exceptional performance, fostering a culture of value and appreciation. Communities of practice, that is the knowledge transfer. Facilitate communities of practice where staff can share the knowledge, experiences, and best practices. That is, when we have a seminar or workshop or workshops in our universities as well. In this, what happens is so the person who is addressing us, they are quite experienced. And we get to know the wisdom of their words from that specific seminar going on. For example, regular multidisciplinary team meetings or online forums can provide a platform for the healthcare professionals to share insights and collaborate on complex cases, promoting continuous learning and knowledge transfer as well. Overall implementation strategy, integrated approach. Integrate these suggestions into a comprehensive quality improvement strategy that address both patient and staff needs. That is, if we discuss this scenario in the corporate sector, it is just like employee and customer. 
Feedback mechanism. Establish mechanism for the regular feedback from both service users and staff to identify areas for the improvement that is the patient and the staff, the doctors and nurses. Continuous monitoring. Implement system for the continuous monitoring and evaluation to track progress and adjust the strategies as needed. That is, you have to implement new steps, uh, new strategies as the things is in the hospital, in the organization. Leadership support. Ensure the leadership commitment and support to drive a culture of quality improvement throughout the organization. By adapting these strategies, health and social care services can enhance their overall quality, fostering a culture of continuous improvement and ensuring that the both service users and staff experience positive and empowering the interactions within the healthcare setting. So we have to look both the user and the patient or the, what do we call, the healthcare staff as well, that how we have to tackle both of them equally to be made more their needs and wants in an equilibrium balance. These are the references and that's it. We are done with the whole learning outcome number three that is for the task one, and three is done. This is basically assignment two and it is basically the second lecture, second last lecture for the specific course.